In chemistry, we often discuss chemical reactions in terms of reaction coordinate pathways. The reactant, fluoroacetate, is imagined to undergo a series of changes along this pathway leading to products, in this case a fluoride ion and glycolate. Of course, a reaction of this kind doesn't happen on its own. Rather, a biological catalyst, or an enzyme shown in green, is involved in both binding the substrate and serving as a scaffold to facilitate hydrolysis. Given that the carbon-fluorine bond is one of the strongest of all covalent bonds, we wanted to learn how the enzyme accomplished this task and possibly learn something about how enzymes work in general. To begin, the substrate, fluoroacetate, is highly toxic and directly interferes with the citric acid cycle in most animals. Not surprisingly, it's used as a pesticide in many parts of the world. However, there are over 40 species of plants who've evolved the capacity to extract trace fluoride salts from the ground and synthesize fluoroacetate, giving them a protective advantage over hungry herbivores. Of course, some or organisms have developed a tolerance to fluoroacetate, while others, like this rod-shaped purple bacterium, Rhodopseudomonas palustris, can devour fluoroacetate, generating a harmless glycolate metabolite. This bacterium possesses a biological catalyst in the form of a homodimeric enzyme called fluoroacetate dehalogenase, shown below when bound to fluoroacetate. Fluoroacetate dehalogenase utilizes a catalytic triad of residues to allow SN2 attack of fluoroacetate, generating a covalent intermediate followed by activation of water through histidine, hydrolysis, and the release of the fluoride ion and the glycolate product. Of course, things are a little more complicated than this. The crystal structure of the enzyme shows in amazing detail the hundreds of bound water molecules and thousands of atoms constituting the Michaelis intermediate of the enzyme when bound to the substrate prior to catalysis. There are around 20,000 kinds of proteins in the human body that do everything from serving as scaffolds for structure, acting as receptors for chemical messengers and signaling, or just catalyzing or speeding up biochemical reactions. This begs the question, what is a catalyst? A catalyst can be as simple as a metal surface of nickel, or ethene and hydrogen molecules can be seen adsorbing to the surface, diffusing and combining until the single bonded ethane molecule is obtained. An enzyme such as fluoroacetate dehalogenase is a biological protein catalyst which is admittedly more complex but serves a critical role of acting as scaffold for the SN2 attack and water-mediated hydrolysis associated with the reaction of fluoroacetate. Through specific point mutations, it's possible to crystallize the enzyme in a substrate-free state, a substrate-bound Michaelis intermediate, a covalent intermediate, and a product-bound state allowing us to assess the ensemble. The backbone crystal structures of these unique states from this ensemble appear to differ very little. However, if we revisit the protein and pay attention to either side chain conformations or water structures, as we see in this substrate free state of the enzyme, we can appreciate finer details that indeed change along the reaction coordinate pathway. Distinct changes in the positioning of bound waters are seen to shift from the substrate free, to the Michaelis intermediate, to the covalent intermediate, to product bound states, suggesting that water networks are playing a role in switching the enzyme from one functional state to the next. A closer examination of X-ray crystal structures also shows that despite a similarity in backbone structure, there is a variation in B factors along the reaction coordinate pathway, which is a result of local inhomogeneity and most likely fast local motions. Note that the dimer is asymmetric from a local dynamics perspective. And upon addition of substrate, the most dynamic regions are located in the empty protomer. Moreover, in the presence of chloroacetate, which is reacted more slowly by the enzyme, these differences in dynamics are smaller. The increase in dynamics of the empty protomer upon binding of the substrate is accompanied by a loss of roughly 30 water molecules which helps entropically to drive the reaction toward completion and has been shown computationally to be connected allosterically with substrate binding. Enzyme dynamics play a key role in connecting states. Here, the dimeric enzyme is shown undergoing a cooperative conformational exchange process on a millisecond timescale, where the states are believed to represent conformers needed during catalysis. A small fraction of the enzymes effectively freeze and adopt a bound-like state which represents no more than a half percent of the ensemble. The substrate, fluoroacetate, may then bind to this conformer, 
which allosterically triggers the loss of bound water molecules and the onset of very fast jiggling in the empty protomer, thus increasing the entropy of the system and thermodynamically driving the reaction. Fast protomer exchange then resumes with a significantly greater amplitude and frequency. The enhanced dynamics may well connect with catalysis and sampling of conformations that lead to the transition state and ultimately to catalysis. This work points to the idea that proteins sample key functional states associated with a reaction coordinate. However, the functional states of the protein are inherently weakly coupled. The addition of substrate enables allosteric pathways and catalysis. Water likely plays a key role in facilitating this process. The details of our research can be found in the January edition of Science. What you won't find in the article are some snapshots of team members who shared in this work over the last six years.